Hey everyone, I'm Colleen Ballinger, and today I'm filming probably the most requested video I have had all year. You guys have been anxiously awaiting this video to be filmed, and here we are. So when I was pregnant with the twins, I had a psychic come to my house and do a psychic reading of me and the twins and the pregnancy and all that, and I have not watched it since I had the babies, but I'm going to watch it today and react to it. I did this when I was pregnant with Flynn, and then I reacted to the video after, like a year or something after he was born, and almost everything she said came true. So I'm very curious to see if anything that she said about the twins came true because I don't remember most of it. I do know that one thing she said, which was very specific, came true and I will get to that when we watch it in the video. But I'm very excited and kind of nervous to do this. It's Halloween time right now. It feels like the perfect time to do something spooky like watch a psychic reading and see if any of it came true. So I guess let's get started and watch this psychic reading. So this is my friend Terry. She has done quite a few psychic readings with me and she is phenomenal. She's wonderful. I'll put her in information below so if you guys want to go check her out you can she's such a sweetheart she's so good at what she does and she genuinely is just like an amazing person so i love interacting with her i love talking with her i love having readings from her and yeah so um let's get started into the reading let's see what terry has to say what's interesting to me i feel like boy is gonna come first that's correct. oh yes <laughs> okay so that's true boy did come first i mean you can kind of if you know much about twins you would know that before i had twins i didn't know how baby A, baby B works, like all that terminology. I never knew about it. Wesley was on the bottom. He was baby A. And so he did come out first. But um, if you don't know anything about twins or if you don't research it, sometimes like you don't really know that. I guess it might be kind of common sense. Like baby A makes sense that it would come first. However, um, she did just blatantly say baby boy is coming first. Now, if you watch my videos a lot and you knew all about like the gender reveal, which I had just posted when I saw Terry, she might know like, oh, she's having a boy and a girl. Baby boy is baby A. So that one's coming first. So she could have learned that ahead of time. I don't think these things about Terry. I think Terry's the real deal and she's very good at what she does, but I'm trying to look at this as a skeptic a little bit. And yeah, I feel like you could have found that information out online, but yes, baby boys first. I'm seeing the number two, so they could be close to two minutes apart or within two minutes of the first one. Okay. This is crazy. Okay, so I did remember this because this blew my mind. So she said that she saw the number two and they're gonna be two minutes apart or close to two minutes apart or exactly two minutes apart. And I remember in this moment thinking, we're gonna have to edit that out. I can't have her saying that because that's crazy. Obviously, they're not going to be two minutes apart. At that point, I was still kind of hoping for like a vaginal birth. And I know that that doesn't ever happen two minutes apart because you birth one kid and then the placenta has to come out and then you have to birth the other kid and another placenta. And it's like a whole process. But even with a C-section, you know, it's definitely going to take longer than two minutes for the babies to come out. But they were born literally two minutes apart. <laughs> I could not believe it. Like when it happened, I was like, oh my God, Terry said they'd be born two minutes apart and they were literally born two minutes apart. And that is something I thought in the moment when she was doing this reading, I was like, that's not gonna happen. And that definitely came true. And the same thing happened with Flynn's birth. There was a lot of things she said about Flynn's birth that I was like, yeah, right. And then it happened. She said it was gonna happen really fast. And I thought, no way, usually your first baby, your first labor is really, really long. And she said, it's gonna happen really, really fast. Your mom's gonna be in the room, which it wasn't part of the plan for my mom to be in the room. It was just supposed to be Eric and my sister. And then my mom showed up right before I started pushing. And the doctor was like, is she staying? And I was like, uh, yeah, I guess. And she's like, yeah, I'm staying. And so then she was in there. Everything she said that was kind of far-fetched to me in the reading with Flynn came true. So this one blew my mind. Yes, the babies were born two minutes apart. That's crazy. Let's keep watching. I feel like you're really slippery. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like with you, things are quick. You know, if it's natural, good news. Slippery. Slippery. Slide right <laughs> like, out. Come on in. It wouldn't surprise me if they're holding hands. <laughs> All right. I I'm gonna throw up. I have goosebumps. I'm gonna cry. I'm literally gonna throw up. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh my God. I don't even know if the mic was up to me that whole time I was just talking. Um, whoa, I'm losing my mind. Okay, so first of all, she said it's really slippery. It seems very slippery. I don't know if you're gonna have a natural birth or not, but it's very slippery. And it was slippery. My water broke. It broke a, a lot. There was a lot of water everywhere, like a lot. <laughs> in fact, like my water broke while I was in bed and then as I walked to the bathroom and then it was just kind of getting everywhere. I had to put on a diaper. It was like a mess until we got to the hospital. But yeah, she said it was gonna happen quick. It was gonna be slippery. And then she said, I wouldn't be surprised if they're holding hands. You guys, I'm gonna cry. 
I'm sorry, but I don't think it's that common for baby newborn twins to hold hands, but that's like the first thing my babies did. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. The twins were born really, really early and they were in the NICU and I couldn't hold them at the same time. Right away, I had to wait to hold them at the same time. But when I finally got to hold them for, at the same time and they were finally on my chest, they immediately held hands. And the nurse was even like, oh my God, did you do that? And I was like, do what? Cause I couldn't see them cause my, I was wearing a mask obviously and they're on my chest and I was just kind of trying to enjoy feeling them on my body. And um, she was like, did you do that? And I was like, do what? And I looked down and they were holding hands. I was like, no, I didn't do that. Did you do it? She's like, I didn't do it. I just put them on you. And she looked away for a second. And when she turned back around, they were holding hands. And I have a bunch of pictures of it because it was such a magical, special moment. It was the first time that twins were back together since being in my stomach. I had them and then they were separated in their little NICU beds. And it was a really sad time. And then when they were finally on me again, they held hands. So that is crazy that she said, I wouldn't be surprised if they were holding hands. Because again, that is a very specific, random thing to say. And newborn baby twins do not hold hands. I mean, my twins are now a year old and they don't hold hands literally ever. So um, that is really, really crazy. I'm seeing pillows. I don't know if you've had pillows made for them already or you're thinking of like little pillows. Oh. I don't know the connection of to pillows and these babies. Do okay. you understand that now? Or Not no? yet. Okay. You know what it could be. In huh? Pillows. I don't know what she's talking about. I literally have no idea what she's talking about. Pillows. She was really specific about this and that's why I kept it in this video because it was so specific and she was kind of like, it, it seemed like she was very serious about like, yeah, there's going to be something that has to do with pillows. And I'm really racking my brain and I cannot think of anything that has to do with pillows with the babies. That's interesting. Maybe I'll get one. Maybe something with pillows will happen eventually. They're only a year old, but maybe not. I don't know. We'll keep watching. I don't feel like you're going to freak out as much this time, even though there's two. So timing wise, even though it goes fast, you'll 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 make it with plenty yeah. of time and all of that. So that's good. Oh, this is also weird. So she said, I don't feel like you're gonna freak out, even though there's two. And she said, and it's gonna go fast. Again, she knew it was gonna happen fast this time, and it really did. Because in case you didn't watch my birth video, I went into labor two months early. Wesley's water broke, and I rushed to the hospital, and his cord was coming out. I had cord prolapse, which is very, very, very dangerous because this blood circulation can be cut off in the cord if the cord is coming out every time you have a contraction and it can really, it's very dangerous. It can really hurt the baby in the worst way. Immediately when they saw that I had cord prolapse, they rushed me in for a C-section. It was an emergency C-section and it happened extremely fast. I got to the hospital and I think within 30 minutes, the babies were out. I mean, it was so crazy how fast they rushed me in there and kept me open to get the babies out. To the point where like my C-section scar is like slanted, like crooked. Like it was like, they were like, get it out. But what's crazy about what she said is it was, it was terrifying. It was very, very scary. And I didn't freak out because I, I, what I remember most about that whole experience was when they took me into the C-section room and Eric was not with me. He didn't come at first. They had, he had to wait behind. I was alone on the operating table and I was so scared. I remember looking up at the lights and just kind of zoning out and just kind of being as stoic and as strong as I possibly could because I was so scared. I didn't know if my babies were going to be okay. I didn't know if I was going to be okay. I didn't understand what was going on. I was really, really, really scared. And I didn't freak out at all. I wasn't panicking. I wasn't hyperventilating. I wasn't anything. Right as they were about to cut me open and they were giving me the medicine and all that, I just was like stoic and quiet and just like staring. I wasn't freaking out at all. I was just like very still and calm. However, I did start to freak out after the babies were born because it was a very kind of traumatic experience. So she is correct in the sense that like I did not freak out in the process of it. I wasn't nervous or freaking out when I went into labor, when my water broke. When I got to the hospital, I was super chill. And then once they found out it was needed to be an emergency C-section, I was very chill and calm on the exterior. I went to kind of like protection mode of myself. Like I was like, if I don't stay calm, I will freak out. And so I just was very stoic and calm. But then after the babies came, then I very much was freaking out and thinking I was dying and it was very scary. What I feel like I'm getting is more about your career, but there's something about you helping, whether you're aware of this or not, or maybe you are intentionally doing this, being a, some sort of a support or through, you know, all of this, bringing comfort to new moms. Hmm. And it's interesting, it's specifically new moms. I almost feel like there's gonna be an evolution in your career. I still feel like there's gonna be writing involved and I still feel like you'll be doing stage work. You may be getting a new staff or a new team. I'm, I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. She is 
so good at what she does. Wow, I'm gonna throw up. Okay, okay, I'm trying to even remember everything she said. First of all, she said, as far as your career is gonna shift and you're going to be there for new moms and a support for new moms, which made me almost cry because that's, I feel like, one of the biggest things that happened after the babies were born was they were in the NICU for a long time and I felt like my comments were full of support from other moms, new moms, moms who were going through the same NICU experience as me at the same time, new twin moms who were going through the struggles of having twin babies, moms who've been moms forever and um, were giving me advice. But my comment section and the people watching my videos, especially in that first couple of months after the babies were born, that was all, very much shifted after the twins. And of course with Flynn too, like there is a whole community of awesome moms who started watching me then, but like I really felt it come on strong after the twins were born. People just watching my stuff because they were going through similar experiences and we were kind of a support system for each other. So that made me feel kind of emotional her saying that. She said writing and she said stage work, which are the two things I'm doing right now. So that is why I'm like, what the heck this woman? So I can't talk about that more than just saying that, but like obviously I'm a tour so you can get tickets if you want to. But yeah, stage work, obviously I'm on tour and writing are things that I'm doing right now with my career. So that's kind of crazy. I mean, I haven't even whipped out the cards and yeah, I don't need out, to. Let's move out the you cards. You want to out some yeah. cards? Okay, so I do want to say that there is movement in money. Now, sometimes movement can be a backward step. Mm -hmm. If that happens, don't freak out because okay. I do feel like there's a the, part of your evolution is to learn how to balance money anxiety. Yay! Oh gosh. Okay. Money anxiety. <laughs> She's not wrong. That's all I'm gonna say. She's not wrong. Okay, moving on. For me, the a white horse is victory. Sometimes we have to take a step back to leap like five steps forward. That's oh good God, to know. That is terrifying. It is a terrifying. <laughs> I honestly like there is something going on right now in my life that you guys will know about very soon that has to do with money and money anxiety and things that I'm going through. I'm really kind of freaking out about. So it's really calming to hear her say that like you have to kind of take a step back to take five steps forward because I do think that the decisions I'm making right now in my life are going to better the life of like my children and my family, but um, it's a really scary process. So um, yeah, that's kind of calming to hear her say. This is gonna be a big transition and a big yeah. change for you. Again, not scary, but it's part wow. of actually what needs to be done for your growth and your mm -hmm. career. Wow. I mean, you're gonna be just fine. Yeah, there's that's just some new people Ooh. coming. So let me check in on baby boy. Um, oh. What? <laughs> Wow, that kid is gonna be funny. He oh, is okay. funny. He's funny. He is Even funny. in his birth, he's gonna do something funny, his or birth. somehow someone is gonna laugh in that labor. Like it's just gonna be mm. like, and it's gonna be from his delivery. So he might come out going like, I don't know what it's gonna be, but it's like he's gonna be uh, entertaining ish. Okay, like you. He's gonna be. That's what it. That's what it feels like. What I like about these. Okay, so no one was laughing during the birth, that's for sure. It was a very traumatic, scary experience. When he was born, as far as I know, no one was laughing. No one was enjoying that. It was just kind of um, scary. However, when my water broke with him, I was cackling hysterically because I just thought it was so nuts. I was like, what is he doing? Why is my water breaking? Like the footage of me right when my water broke, I look crazy because I'm laughing so hard. So maybe that's what she was picking up on. So I guess I'm having babies right now. <laughs> I'm back. We have to pick names. It's the same situation as Flynn. We don't know. <laughs> With Flynn, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, you think I would have learned my lesson. And she did say in the labor process, someone, someone would be laughing and cracking jokes. Something he was going to do was going to be funny. He didn't do anything funny. Um, he just broke his water, which was not fun. And then he let his cord fall out, which was silly, I guess, but wasn't funny. It was more just very scary. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know about that. I do feel like she's going to be more serious. She's more serious. Okay. She's more serious and she might even be a bit precocious. <laughs> she's more serious. Okay. So that's very interesting because Wesley is kind of a big goofball. Like he's kind of just like a silly little goof. And Maisie, she's not more serious. I wouldn't say that word because that implies that she doesn't ever smile or laugh because she can be very goofy. But Maisie is more serious in the sense that when she meets you, she is like very skeptical of you. She's very judgmental. Like of any new person, she's like, like since she was born, everyone has always been like, oh, she's the sassy one. She's like, she's got an attitude. Like she's like very side eye at everyone she sees. And then once you get to know her and her personality comes out, you get to see that she's like this goofy, silly girl. But um, Wesley is more goofy upon meeting him and silly upon meeting him, whereas Maisie is much more serious. Oh, she's going to know exactly what she wants. That's yeah. true. <laughs> Uncle Corey's like, yeah, yes. she's going to know exactly what you she wants. She does. And it's me 24 no seven. 
problems guessing what's on her mind because she Good. will tell you that's she's true gonna be very strong which is okay. nice she's gonna be stronger than he is <laughs> but you know he's gonna win people's hearts stop Terry, I swear to God. Okay, she said she's going to be stronger than he is. I don't know what exactly she means by that, but when they're in the NICU, Wesley went home first. That could be perceived as like he was the stronger baby or whatever, but Maisie was met with many more challenges. She couldn't breathe when she was born, and that is something we'd say about her all the time. Like, she's so strong. She's so strong because she kept fighting through all these things that kept happening to her when she was in the NICU, and Wesley, he was, you know, naturally strong, and everything came pretty easy to him compared to Maisie as far as, like, eating and growing. And, and regulating his body temperature and all the things he needed to do to go home. So he got to go home first. But Maisie would just kept saying, oh, she's so strong. She's fighting. She's pushing through all these things. So um, I have always felt that way about Maisie. She is this really strong little girl. But yeah, so that's interesting to hear her say that. She said something else that was interesting. Let me hear. Oh, she's going to know exactly what she wants. Yeah. <laughs> she knows exactly what she wants. This is what freaked me out. She said this. You will have no problems guessing what's on her mind. That. You will have no problems guessing what's on her mind because she will tell you. I have always said that. You guys can go back and watch any videos of me explaining the baby's personalities. I've always had Maisie is zero to 100 with her emotions and she lets you know exactly what she wants and when she wants it. So like if she's happy, you know she's happy. If she's mad, you know she's mad. If she's sad, you know she's sad. Like there's no guessing with Maisie. Like she's like immediately, whatever she feels, she lets you know that second. Like she has no problem letting you know what she wants and when she wants it. That is very true. He's going to be very entertaining. I can see almost like he'd be doing cartwheels mm-hmm. or like okay. throwing balls, but like juggling. He's like, not He's not so walking or anything yet. So or she she said he's gonna be juggling cartwheels stuff like that so that's interesting you know he's not walking yet he's still crawling so maybe someday but right now she kept I remember her saying he's gonna be into vaudeville stuff like that but again we won't know that for a little bit longer and she's just super intelligent mm-hmm. don't that's be surprised true. with her if it takes her a little bit of time to talk that's coming up mm-hmm. nothing's wrong with her she's more of an observer and a witness and a participator so she may not talk right away or you know if there's certain markers you know, mm-hmm. nothing's wrong. Whereas he, he's going to be like, hey, and she's just going to be like, hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I'll say something. Mm-hmm. Oh! But it won't surprise me if he starts talking first. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, why isn't she talking? Or she hasn't met that marker or something like that. Don't, do not worry. Okay. Do not worry. Very interesting. Wow. Okay. So Maisie has always been pretty much with most of like the major milestones after Wesley. Like Wesley always does things first and Maisie always does them much later than him. Like with literally everything, their teeth growing in, crawling, sitting up, every, like literally everything. And Maisie has her own markers that she hits before Wesley, but they have to do with like observing and like, you know, how she plays with toys and picks up her food with her, like things like that. She was always first first before Wesley with that kind of stuff. Whereas Wesley is first with like the more traditional milestones, like crawling, sitting up, things like that, talking, whatever. So that's very interesting. And I'm curious to know when they start actually talking more, if that's going to come true. But with everything else, that is true. She's slower with the markers than Wesley is. And so that's very interesting that she knew that. All righty, guys. So that's that. Wow. Well, that was fun for me. Was it fun for you? I don't know. Um, You guys wanted this video so badly. Everyone was begging for this video for so long. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm very curious to know as the babies get older, Older if everything she says really does come true. Most of the stuff she said was accurate. There's a couple things I was like, hmm, like the baby pillows, like teeth t- pillows or something. I was kind of like, what's that about? But most of the stuff I really felt like was very accurate. She's very good at what she does. And the same thing happened with Flynn's birth. Like everything she predicted did come true. So I love her. She's wonderful. If you guys want to check her out, you can. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and come see me on tour. I love y'all very much and I'll see you next time. Bye.